not be there would be a major hindrance for him in this process? Uh, that's a good question. I, you know, it, it, in fact, we were talking about it this morning um, because now I've seen Reggie Sutton in the last couple of games. We've been able to use him and kind of steal snaps with him. He's played about 27 snaps in two games as a more or less a blocking and play action tight end. But we lost a lot when Jerome, you know, was, was out or is out. And, uh, you know, from week to week, kind of thought he was coming back, kind of thought he was coming back. And next thing you know, a couple of weeks go by. And um, it hurt us in the run game. It hurt us a little bit in play action. And it, it certainly hurt the pass game. You know, because I think we finally realized, like I think we talked about it here way back after the Kansas game, that I, that I thought that was the one guy in the field they couldn't handle. And then I kept telling Art, just find him. Like, it's not so much about, you, know, you have to understand, the structure was taking you there anyway, but you should have, you know, I think you started to rely on him a little bit more um, as he got more comfortable with him, because remember he wasn't here in the spring, and he was a little bit limited in camp, and it took him a little while to get up to speed, Jerome. So he didn't have a lot of experience with him other than all of a sudden the season starts, and you realize, wow, this guy's a force, you know? Um, so losing him hurt. You know, we didn't really talk about it much, or you know, we kind of we have a, a number of other guys that are good players, but you know, to discount the experience that he had uh, and the confidence, and, and Art was growing confidence in him, it, it did make it difficult because you know, who's the bell cow? Reed, I guess, right? If you look at the if you look at the numbers, but I think Jerome would have had some pretty darn good numbers had he been able to stay healthy, and I think he'd become a you know more of a viable option. Another guy you just could kind of try to spot up and mismatch get the ball to on third down. And uh, so when he went out of the lineup, I think that was a big miss for us. And, uh, you know, we've we made up a little bit for it with Reggie these last couple weeks. It's helped. But it's still not the same as having a guy out there that's a dual threat. Um, similar question, but um, on Art's pro progress, I think he went into the game with 70 straight passes without interception. It was the longest in the Big Ten. Um, I know he threw one late, you know, in, in the game, but what has he d been able to do to, to, to th cut down on his interceptions? Is it offense? Is it improvement from him? Is it a combination of everything? Uh, I think it's a combination. I think it's more, uh, you know, kind of like I said, going into this game, the education <coughs> for me, you know, like some of those games, I think maybe I thought we could do more than we were ready to do, and it just kind of gave let them fire away a little bit, and then you realize, you know, we, we probably should have been a little bit smarter. Uh, with the plan, you know, um, and some of it is just his confidence in, you know, uh, kind of like what we said last week, his confidence in the thought process of he doesn't have to go just make some play now to put the ball in the end zone or to advance and then just to play within the structure a little bit and trust that if the first read isn't there, the next guy will be, be there for him. To, I think he, he's understanding the timing of the pocket and a little subtle movements in the pockets a little bit better. Um, to give himself a little more space to get to that next read and to not feel pressed to just throw it to the first guy regardless of what's going on. So I think all those things have kind of contributed to it. You know, experience being the, the overriding factor of all of it. I think to, to play in these games against these defenses, you know, every week, you know, every week we're talking about one guy or the other. This week we're talking about 99 to get seven sacks. So, I mean, every week you're talking about you know, the ability to rush the pass and the blitz package. But, I think the comfort level, so to speak, of that, having played, you know, 10 games now, that's starting to seep in a little bit too. And, and I, I, you know, like I said last week, you can feel the confidence when he's on the sideline, very calm. He's very uh, good as far as communicating things. He's very, you know, ready to go, so to speak, rather than it's not fake. And it's not, you know, just like bravado. It's like, no, I got this. I think it'll be okay. So I think it's all a combination of all that stuff. If you guys get those two screen passes on the first drive of the game, do you think that the passing attack is drastically different? Well, you know, it's it, we went into it. We were not going to play a traditional pass game. Like, like just take, for instance, Penn State, you know, the week four or five sacks, two, basically two pick sixes, and the quarterback gets knocked out. But, you know, you go right through the whole thing. And if you go back each week, it's, it was kind of the same result. So, uh, to sit there and just anybody that tried to do the traditional, like, hey, we just run a place, got beat up pretty good. So, um, the execution of the screens was paramount in having any success in, in the game. And we didn't, you know, we didn't, we didn't either block the man cover guy or, you know, make the catch or the throw, you know, whatever it was, it was one thing or another. And, and so, when they don't hit, like, if that first one had hit, 
you know, who knows? Because we had a big run, we're up there at the 50, and that one looked like it was going a pretty good ways. Um, you know, maybe things change. Maybe they don't man it up as much. You know, even down the next drive, you know, Travis runs right by the man cover guy, and he goes to tackle for a five-yard game on third and nine. We just get in front of him. It's a first. So the number one kind of emphasis of how to get these things going, you know, we didn't execute it right the first handful of times, and then now you're chasing the game a little bit, like, okay, we're going to run another screen. Because there really wasn't a lot of plan of if we get, like, you know, a bunch of third and longs, it's okay, we just chunk it down the middle of the field. And that's what they want you to do. That's how they baited people into a lot of bad plays. But you when know, you're not having success, and it's too bad because really all year we've had pretty good success with the screens. And uh, the week before, you know, we've we operated them pretty well. And, you know, obviously, you know, these guys were good. And, um, but it's disappointing that we couldn't get them going. You know, the first one was the big one. Uh, to me, the first one was the big one. It really, you know, it was a little bit rushed. You know, we, you don't mind one guy coming off the backside. We shouldn't have had two. A little bit rushed, and but still, it's right there. You know, who knows what, where the game goes from there. But, but that certainly, that certainly hurt. Well, I mean, uh, it's like Parcells, well, you talk about having confidence in your personnel and, you know, how, how aggressive you're going to be on game day. And, um, you know, I think you just have to look at who our best players are right now and try to see if we can't get them the ball the most times possible. And if that means not necessarily, I mean, we've gone away from a lot of different things that I thought we were going to do. We have you know, like we talked about before, we don't shift the motion a whole lot anymore. We don't do a lot of stuff. But, um, all in the name of just trying to let our best players go win the game. And if, if we can't do it with those guys, and so be it. So to just, and I, I think some of that was what happened, we just talked about earlier in the year. It was like, hey, we li I like these plays, so let's run these plays. Well, you look at where the cup and go, well, you know, it's, it's not really wasn't a good idea. There's nobody open. Or the ball gets tipped or you throw it, you know, if you, you get to the point where a guy like Art feels like, well, we're running this play, I must be supposed to get this to someone and the ball goes out there and, and, and it goes to them or whatever. So um, that's why we're not scoring. <clears throat> Quite frankly, that's why we don't score. So our big plays have been the run game or Pacheco passes, I guess. Uh, and so, um, you know, if, if that's the way it's going, you, you know, they're, they're not, it's great, but it's hard to, to get points on the board. And quite frankly, that's really why, in my opinion, we haven't, we haven't scored. So. Um, and last week, not you know the best example. We we're going to try a whole lot last week. Again, you know, even look at you know we got a little bit in the mode of more of the the kind of eleven personnel passes, trying to move the ball a little bit. I mean, if the ball was coming out relatively quick, and he was still getting hit. So to think that we were going to hold the ball and try to chunk it against them was that, that wasn't the week. Before, but you can see it kind of tail off the previous weeks as well. Do you use the next two games to sort of try to be more creative with Pacheco and Blackshear? You know you're going to have the two of them going forward and trying to find ways to use them. I know you did the Wildcat this week. And I guess <coughs> the problem would be, is Pacheco cannon for the Wildcat? Because obviously he can throw the ball, but that would add something to it. Yeah, I, you know, they, we went back and forth on who, you know, who's the guy, who's the, you know, the quarterback, who's the ball carrier, and, and um, you know, kind of came back. Which obviously what happened in the game was the biggest fear we talked about all week. Did and then at 15 promptly moving from the ball, but um, so uh, no, the, the, those are you know those are two of the two of the guys. Obviously, if you started the list of we want the ball. It's like one and one a, however you want to do it, and um, they both have <clears throat> things that they can do. Like I said, Isaiah can run and throw, and he can catch out of the backfield. He can run, throw, and line up as a receiver and catch out of the backfield. So yeah, I think we have to just. You know, try to find as many uh, options we can to just get them the ball. And I think I think when you do that, you know, I think the players, you know, you're in the middle of a long season, and uh, certainly hasn't been any let up in the effort or anything. But I think it does put a little gas in the tank of the players. They go, oh, okay, this is something new, and hey, we got to get this going. And they like, you know, excited when you actually do it in the game. Um, so you know, th those are the, the main guys. I mean, I don't think that's any secret. I don't think we're telling. 
Penn State anything they don't know. I mean, those are our main guys. Um, but there are a number of other guys who like to, to test, so to speak, in these last couple of weeks. It's hard to, to say you're going to do that in the middle of the game, but there are some other guys we'd like to see maybe show up and, and do some things as well. But um, if you started the game, you'd say, you know, those guys need to get the ball the bulk of the time. Coach, uh, kind of feeding off the other question before about the passing game and the teams. Have you been kind of disappointed with the number of drops this year so far? Well, you know, it, yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know, I just say it like it is. You know, I, to me, like what I told the players, that they made all their plays whole, and we didn't make enough. Like, we dropped three balls at probably, I don't know, 100 yards or whether it was points or whatever it would be. Um, and, you know, you're not going to come out of a game. Sometimes you're going to have a drop here or there. But when you watch, you know, if you see where you need to get to to go win championships, you know, I, I saw nine and four and 83 and 80, whatever he was, that ran across the back of the end zone. You know, th those guys made all of them. You know, third and long, guys scrambling, throws, jump ball, back show. They, they made them all, the quarterback too. So, and we didn't, you know, make the ones. I mean, when it was that limited a pass game going in, when you had them there to hit big, they had to hit. And if they didn't, it was going to be a, a tough tough to score. Um, so that, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's disappointing. I mean, I haven't done receivers for another number of years. Uh, the number one thing is can he catch, which sounds obvious, but most of the time uh, I've been in fights with scouts and draft rooms. I've been in fights with guys here, with Greg and recruiting coordinators and all that. And, and this guy is so big, though, he can throw him face. Well, I think he can't catch him. You know, and then when the, when the guy's coming out of college and he's 22 and he can't catch, it's like, wait, well, we just got to work with him. Well, I don't know who's work, you know, the ball just comes faster, it's tight quarters. It's, you know, so to me, when you're evaluating that position, and that's 15 years of coaching, and maybe it's right, right, wrong, or whatever, it's just my It's getting catch, A number one over all the other interesting stats that people like to throw in there. So uh, that's something you can work on, but that's a lot of times is on the player because you'll never be able to catch as many balls as whoever. Go right through the list, the guys from Jerry Rice on down, just in general, just stand there catching them. And it's the only way to get good at it. So, and get your arms strong, you know, your hands strong, all the things, sand, you know, butts and sand, all, all those things. So, but that that's the number one job of a, of a receiver, and obviously it's hurt us, you know, this year. Take two more. Two-part question. Um, on, on your roots with Penn State, um, one, you know, I know it's a long time. I'm assuming it's the first time you've played, uh, coached against Penn State or, or uh, seen Penn State on the other side since Michigan GA. Exactly. And then the other part was, I know you played there in 88. I was wondering from the other side, that was the last time Rutgers beat Penn State. What do you remember about that game? Those two uh, you know, emotions and then I guess that game. I remember the uh, – 20 seconds of quarterback. I remember there was a play, and not that to, Tony's to down in South Jersey now. I remember we had, late in the game, if I'm correct, Dave Jacob, the tight end, was wide open. In the, I think he was the only guy in the end zone. The ball went like 10 feet over his head, and we lost the game. And uh, obviously, it was a huge win for Dick Anderson. You know, I haven't been at Penn State for, for a number of years. And Dick's son, Jeff, was on the team with us at Penn State. He's a year younger than me. So, uh, and, you know, it was almost. It was the first time, you know, as mad as Joe was, it was different in the locker room afterwards. I think there was a little bit almost of, of whether it was respect, whatever it was, that it, at least it was Dick that beat us. You know what I mean? It felt weird. And, you know, I remember him saying we got out of hustle, we got out of coach, we got out of play, we got out of everything. You know, so, um, but yeah, that's what I remember about the game. But maybe that's not even accurate. I, I swear that there was a, we had a chance and it, it just didn't hit, or the was under pressure, whatever happened. And, uh, and, um, and that ended up being, I think it was Joe's first losing season ever at the time. I think he may have had yeah. one more so. later, uh, a couple of years later. But um, so, uh, and no, I haven't, I have not, you know, gone against these guys since the, the, it was the first couple of years in the Big Ten. We, we played them, we went up and beat them there. I think it was a thousandth game at Beaver Stadium. And then they, they uh, the great Penn State team in 94, they beat us 31 24, which I remember Monty Tumor got a short arm one at the end. To this day, that I still don't know what happened. You know, I thought we were in time, but I think 31 was the lowest they scored in any game that year. Yeah. So it's been a long time, and then I, you know, it's different. I guess when you work for so many different places, it's not as. But you know, I grew up in Pennsylvania. I, I do, I do have a lot of respect for you know with James and a guy like Trace McSorley, and some of those guys have done too. You know, obviously that could have gone a lot of different ways. Sure. 
um, when they got there and they were able to kind of right the ship, so to speak, and uh, obviously get it going in the right direction. So, you know, I'm interested to meet Trace at some point after the game, probably just to tell him as a as a alum that a lot of people appreciate what he's done there, and um, you know, obviously it helped a lot of other guys too. But that's a tough guy that's done a lot for that program. Can Reggie Sutton catch? Yeah, I think he can. I'll tell you, you know, it's funny. Like I don't, you forget he's a tackle. I, I do. Like I'm, you watch him play, you think. I mean, he's 270 ish. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe he is a tight end. I don't know. You know, rather than say, hey, you got to put on 50 and go be a tackle, maybe it's drop 15 and go be a tight I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's a great, he's a great kid. He's tremendously smart, calm demeanor, very, you know, like, like there's a couple things at halftime we talked about, and he's like, yeah, sure. He just lines up. Blocks Vinovich. Like, he's like, yeah, whatever. You know I mean? He, he, uh, He's a pretty cool customer, and he's, he's helped us the last couple of weeks. I, I guess, how did that conversation begin? You just wanted to get him on the field, and you knew that you needed something at tight end. I mean, how did he get chosen? Well, I think it became kind of like what you guys said about the Jerome thing. You know, we go through a couple of weeks, and we're struggling a little bit now, and all of a sudden, with the edge, at the edge, you know, in a run game, and um, it's like, well, ooh, what are the alternative? You know, and, and, and uh, it came up as an alternative, and uh, and it was right on cue because there was four games left. Yeah, we actually talked about it the week before at Northwestern. Got into that kind of you know bye week or you know during the week, and then it was almost too late. And I was like, well, there's five games. Then it was like, well, we kind of prompted them, hey, this is what's going to happen. So just kind of get them going on a little bit. And then once we got into Wisconsin week, it was like full speed ahead. And four games left kind of made it made it nice to you know not have to worry about you know going down any road that you had to shut off for whatever reason you play in every game. Here on out. He loves it. I mean, the players love it. They get fired up when he goes in there. They were all fired up when he, when he knocked 15 down. And, you know, he, he's, he's helped us. And he's a good kid. I think he'll help us a lot in the future for sure. Now he's got four years left. Thanks, Coach.